Okay, let's uh, call the meeting to order. Um, let me get the, uh, I'm just doing this. Uh, discussion and approval of the minutes. I motion to approve. I have a motion. I have a second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Uh, is there any public uh, comment? No, I'll say. Nobody wants to comment. People, if you're out there, please comment. We need we need to know what's going on. Okay, uh, main branch library updates. I guess I'll, I'll, I'll give the updates on that one. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce two of our new staff members. We have Alan Polanco uh, that just joined our Makerspace uh, advisory team. And then we have Sarah Weisinger just joined Team Librarianship. I don't know if you all want to just say a little bit about yourselves. <clears throat> Let me go first. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, good afternoon. My name is Anna Polanco. I'm excited to be part of the library stuff. I'm even more excited to start as a makerspace advisor to see if I can bring new ideas to the table and that we can provide a better, not a better, but a more uh, services or Stuff. I'm sorry, no. but uh, more uh, amenities, sort of, so the public could uh, create more. That's that's the, that's the thing that I, I would want to promote for them to make stuff on their own. And I'm happy to be here. Let me add to that. Uh, <laughs> the members have been here the longest. Maker mm -hmm. Space is a relatively new program, starting with two staff members. But because of the need, uh, they actually created a new position, uh, another makerspace advisor. And we're actually looking to hopefully add a makerspace supervisor to the new future because this is where it's going. So, this is added is a, a new position, if you will. And so, it's, it, we stole them from another department. And, uh, like it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, he, he, he was. Uh, he was, he just, I, I like he, obviously he got nervous, but uh, I like the fact that he, customer service oriented, we already have compliments about that, and he's a willing to get his head dirty and just try and take that up. So most of the things have been. So does that make one on each friend? Two and one. Two, 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 two okay. Yeah. Two, one, one. Awesome. It depends on the need. Yeah, I know. But obviously they, they can move around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Alan will be working with, with Anthony here at this branch. Hopefully we'll we'll be needing more people in, in yeah. the makerspace area. Yeah. I could I could tell as somebody who uses it. <laughs> it's very, very good, cost effective, and it's a good service to have for the community. And uh, I found out we had another service that some of our local businesses could take advantage of. Yeah. The uh, no notary. Fridge. The notary. Oh, the notary, yeah. Thanks. Sarah. So hi, I'm Sarah Weisinger. I'm a new teen librarian here, um, relocated from the Austin area, but I've lived kind of all over. So I'm hoping to bring some big picture thinking to teen services and help grow them. Nice to meet you. It's a bit weird. Yeah, <laughs> actually, Sarah's first day today. So, oh, well. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, welcome to work. Um, and the other update that we have for you, hopefully after the meeting, you can take a, a walk, but we did start the uh, team renovations. Um, so there's some new paint on in that area, some furniture moving about. B, to put you on the spot, you wanna just talk a little bit about the yeah. addition? Mm -hmm. So um, the space for teens is, I guess, kind of a large aspect of the library. Um, and it's the space that we were hoping would be primarily used for teens, but with technology changes um, being like as big as it is, and especially after COVID, we were noticing that um, in our teen advisories, when we were asking them what the kids wanted, what the teens wanted, they were looking for a space that was a little bit more open and more themselves so they could have a really good lighting study and be able to do like art projects. Um, and have the similar amenities that South most does, uh, which uh, currently is the video game. Oh, it's going to have the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We have the Xbox, the Nintendo Switch, and I think that the PS4. So we're hoping to bring that in over here as well, but it is obviously going to be a little time consuming and it's going to take its time. We want to make sure that it's natural and that we don't 
have this huge impact to the space currently. We just finished uh, removing the wallpaper. So now we have like a pale lilac and like a powdery blue. It looks a lot lighter and the space is a lot more open. We've removed some of the furnitures to be able, that, that was not being really used, to be able to open that space up some more. And um, the biggest change right now is just the painting. The space wallpaper up on the second floor, the, the space and NASA kind of looking one, that has stayed the same, that we're not gonna go ahead and change. We just try to, add to the environment of that. And then a lot of the, um, we've also cleared up the space here in between the shelves to make that space also available for the teens. That's a lot closer to like the computer lab where parents might be able to have a, a much clearer vision of their kids. IRC be looking directly into the space for teens with those less also facilitates parents kind of building that trust. Um, so we're keeping a lot of that there. We're just trying to open up the space a little bit more and make it more welcoming to our teens. And just as a point of reference, yes, I've been here that long. When the team was created, that area was created, it was back in 2012. And so at the time, all the furniture that was there was used. But I think you may have told you later, things have changed. It was it was not being used because there was a new concept, so we decided to change it. Uh, if you fail to to adapt, then it's going to fail. So that's yeah. what we're doing. As I told the ladies, I'm not used to the colors. But that's what it's all about. And so we're going to repurpose uh, some of the furniture. We're going to be adding you know, some research to add more utilization in that area. We might have video games, TV data, what have you. But definitely what it was there, just not be. Like a CD Exactly. 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 Yeah. Because we need, to, we, need, we need to adapt. You know, everything is done strategically. We do <clears> not. <throat> I take pride and we go to the budget topic or for the budget that we're budget neutral, we've planned accordingly, and we, we manage what we have, and we don't use budget as an excuse. So it is a work in progress, yeah. but at least the first step is taken. We've got, yeah. and hopefully, um, as months progress, we'll, we'll fine tune it. But um, I do invite you, if you all want to take a piece of peek to see the new colors in there. Look forward to seeing them. And that's pretty much it for our oh, updates. Okay, for the updates. updates. <laughs> awesome. Let's go to library report, uh, adult services. Oh, I'm sorry, were there any questions? Okay, let's go to adult services. So good afternoon. Um, I'm gonna be presenting to you what we did over the month of June, this past month. And so we are trying to introduce more uh, programs in regards to plants, the environment, being green. Yes. And we had a class on making your own, doing your own natural plant fertilizer. And it's very, very simple. We just use banana peels, hot water, and the coffee cups. <laughs> very simple. I uh, had the, the patrons uh, decorate their cup with why they were, um, with the kind of plant that they wanted to start taking care of, right? And to write down what they will have to do to take care of the plants. And they got to eat a free banana. <laughs> so we did that at both branches. And also um, then later in the month, we had a presentation from the, well, that same slide, sorry. <laughs> the Native Plant Society of Texas, the president of the RGB chapter, Mr. Roberto Gaitan, he came in and he was, showing uh, the adults how they can do landscaping for birds. They learned about the different kind of birds and plants that are cute, that grow here naturally because they're native, right? Uh, and how it, um, how their life cycle and everything just goes on and helps out each other. He was even talking about how fire dragonflies kill mosquitoes, <laughs> how we don't really need any sprays or chemicals that will damage other life forms. It's more dry plants. <laughs> I learned so much from him and the other people too, they loved it. A patron even came in and he was passing out mountain laurel, 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 laurel. Um, seeds. Laurels. Yes. Mm -hmm. That he said that they smell like Kool-Aid. <laughs> Right, the, the flowers. Uh -huh. <laughs> the ones that planted flowers, uh, flowers will smell like that. 
really nice. Okay. I have a question. Uh, yes. is, uh, is this the first time you've done this event? That's the second presentation second. he makes. Okay. Uh, in May, he came in and he did one of uh, gardening for butterflies. This and, one was for birds. And then what's like the demographic? I guess I can see it, like the you know adults. age. It's all adults. Mm -hmm. Mostly yeah. adults that I haven't seen those, those adults in other programs. So they're kind of brand new. It's, it's a different kind of set of people. Like younger adults, mid, older, retired, any? Just, I mean, this is a small part of me. 30s and older. 30 and older. <laughs> then, do honor our dads, right? Um, so we had a chamamango with dad. We we had them make an assembly line or a line where um, they would get a, a scoop of ice cream, mango ice cream, with where they can then add chamoy and a piece of tamarito candy to it and eat it. And on this day, the May Academy came in and they had barbers. Um, student barbers come in and to give dads their haircut. They really liked it. The patrons were very patient. They were sitting down, just relaxing, waiting for their turn to get their haircut done. Um, they were very understanding and peaceful. I had to speak to them in two separate groups because the line was huge. So I spoke to them outside the main meeting room and then inside. They were very patient. This was one day? On the 17th of June. Well, it was on a Monday. Well, Monday. The day after. Okay, the yeah. after. Yeah, the day after. And just like I told them on that day, hey, like sometimes for birthdays or weddings or whatever, they don't just celebrate it on one day. That's extended for you guys too. And we'll those. Just curious, where does she come up with a name? Is that like huh? Ch uh, Chalamon? Oh, it's a word for uh, a last so like a. <laughs> It's mine. Already exists. It already exists. Already exists. We didn't invent it. Yeah, we didn't invent it. I didn't invent it. <laughs> so. Then we also had a Disney trivia night. <clears throat> Everyone was excited. Well, they were very excited. At both branches, we had it, just like the Chama Monkey with Dad. Uh, we had the adults participate, and we had the kids help them out. <laughs> And they were very cooperative. Uh, we only had three winners per branch. We did want to make it competitive. So, yeah. That was a Mickey Mouse event. They answered, <laughs> <laughs> they answered 100 questions. We passed the hour. And, and I asked them, we were on question like 82 or something. And they're like, and I asked, oh, do you guys want to go all the way to 100? Or do you guys want to call? It's like, no, we want to finish. And so, oh, I know, because let's finish it. <laughs> They did a hundred questions. And so for this month, we are going to have another trivia night, but it'll be on San Rio. We're expecting a good crowd too. We will be having the picnic at the library in the front. Hopefully it doesn't rain. Uh, we are going to be giving out, uh, well, sandwiches. The, the regular old sandwich with the bread, mayo, cheese, and ham. If they want to bring their own um, fruits or other sites or their own kind of food, they can too. Um, we are going to continue with the computer classes. We did have them in the month of June and July. We will too. And just right now, um, right after this presentation, I'm going to step up because I'm going to go present on Amelia Earhart. Um, it's going to happen right now at six. <laughs> and afterwards, I will be giving the, the patrons the library tour of all the library services that we have. And then Amelia Earhart is just to like know everything about her type yes. of thing. So I was looking at the sign outside. Okay. Just who she was, her background, her mm -hmm. education, her story, her disappearance, what's the mystery behind it, what are the theories. You are making and you're making her connection to her getting to Brownsville, too. To Brownsville right? Getting you guys know right. Getting her com commercial okay. license down here. There's a yes. there's a yeah. Brownsville connection that it yeah, there was, well, that's why there's a. I know because some people always question why we have a statue of Minnie Earhart. What did yeah. she do? Well, she she spent time here at the here on Palm Boulevard at the Pan Am, Pan Am apartments. She lived there and she did a uh, she did her what well, she got a commercial her commercial license. Oh, like, and at the same time, she would met with uh, 
Charles Lindbergh and others, they were doing the Pan American. Uh, mm -hmm. Charles White Lindbergh was here too? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's when she came the, to the first time. He's the one that flew the mail from New York to Panama. Oh, okay. And this a collaboration with the Park Department where they created the bridge? Yep. They came over and they went for it. That's why it was like, yeah. They yeah. came over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of the one of the city initiatives having collaboration in order with the other departments that we are Now we can do the Chris Christopherson uh thanks. <laughs> so do you guys have any other questions? Oh uh, the trivia night, that's like a newer thing, right? It's like it's yeah, we're giving it a try. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of people who get excited about it. Because we know people know a lot, right? And sometimes they don't have a space to share that info. So I kind of think they would like to maybe show it out there. <laughs> trivia, is, trivia is very popular, I know, because I've seen people just go away with it because it, it, is, it is a lot, like you said, people have a lot of information. Uh, a lot of us have a lot of useless information, like all that. Mm -hmm. like, you know, <laughs> it's not useless. But it's kind of good because even good. though it's an adult service, it, it's bringing in the families together. Like, yeah, you know, like kids are invited. Um, I got some books from the children's collection that are about every year, so they, they can continue reading. What are the prizes? There's no prizes for this one. Oh, oh but for the trivia, well, the Amelia Earhart is just a presentation, right. and the trivia night on San Rio, they, they're like a pillow. It's a pillow, a little like bottle <laughs> of like. I kind of forgot all of their names. That's Sorry, right. Cinnamon Row is the one of them. Cinnamon Row is the big one. Yeah, that we have. You said San Rio. Sorry. Well, that's like that's Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty brand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Hello Kitty. Okay. Okay. I, I have to learn a lot because I created the okay. okay. I got help to create the questions. A hundred also. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, well, thank you so much. And I'll be sending you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. All right. Thank you. Go we'll teach you about Amelia. Uh, youth services. All right. Hi. So I've been here a couple of months, so this is my first library board meeting. So my name is Avery Danielson. I'm the new uh, children's librarian here. I'm super excited to be here. So we are full in swing with our summer reading program, and it's going really well. We had 1,237 people register. The registration cut off at the, towards the end of June. Um, that's about 200 less than last year, but last year the link was on Facebook, so anybody could register. All of those people had to come to the library and physically be here and participate to register, so we're very excited about that. Yeah, that was a very, that was a strategic move too, to, to come see the library. Yes. In person. So in June, we had two kids' nights. Our first one was the library expedition, and we were um, excited about that one in particular because we haven't really done a very active one like this before. Um, so it was really fun. They had little, uh, it was kind of like an obstacle course with they would jump from the tiles to evade the crocodiles. Um, then they had to put together a puzzle all under a tunnel and uh, everyone had a lot of fun. It was a, a big success. Then our second kids night was Camp Cryptid and they got to build their own terrariums for a cryptid of their choice. And the the, so the cryptids were the Loch Ness Monster, Mothman, Bigfoot, and the Chupacabra. And those all were, they were about this big, and they were all made um, with our 3D printers. And it was also a huge success. They, I think by half an hour, all of the cryptids were gone. Everyone was having fun creating those. We have had some super awesome and fun and engaging presenters so far. Our first one was the Fragile Planet Wildlife Park, which is the picture down in the right corner. And he brought a couple animals. He brought a lizard, which you can see the little white touching in the top left corner, um, a little alligator. I can't remember if it was an alligator or a crocodile. I think it's an alligator um, in the bottom right hand corner. Um, and an owl, which was everyone's favorite, I think. Um, so he was very engaging and educational. Everyone learned a lot. 
and uh, it was really fun. It was really cool to have animals in the library, especially the owl. Um, in the top right corner was our most recent presenter. That's Oscar Munoz. He is a comedian magician and he was awesome. He had all the adults, all the kids laughing and everyone was surprised at his magic tricks and it was, it was a great show. Then in the bottom left corner, that is BK Bones. And she taught us all about the dinosaurs that used to live here in Texas. And that was also a really, really cool experience. Our summer bash was at the end of June and we had 796 people come. It was a big giant party and it was so much fun. There were rides and food, free pizza and drinks. Um, we had collaborations with different city departments, police department, fire department, public works. Um, as you can see, the SWAT truck was a very popular one. Uh, all, all of them were really popular. Public works brought some really cool tractors and uh, we also had the Brownsville Classics cars come and show off their cool vintage cars. So it was it was a lot of fun. This was here at the main branch? I'm sorry, it was at Southmost. Southmost. Okay. Yes. They do alternate um, every year. So last year, Summer Bash was here at Maine. So this year, it's at Southmost. Next year, we'll come back to Maine. And these are the things that we're looking forward to this month in July. So tomorrow we have our Can't Make Believe Kids Night uh, where kids can choose to either make a fairy wand and crown or a sword and shield. Then this week we also have Gladys Porter Zoo coming. And then next week will be our Space Camp Kids Night. And also next week, we're super excited. Meg Medina is coming. She's a big time author. She's won the Newbery Medal. She's won the Buddha Belpre Medal. She's won the Caldecott Honor Medal. She's a she's a very big deal, and she's the ambassador for um, for youth, the youth ambassador for the American Library Association. So she's going to be here, and we're super excited about it. Where's she coming from? She oh, good question. I don't know where she's coming from, where she lives right now, um, but not here. <laughs> um, yeah, where it's gonna be, she likes to do these presentations in a conversation style. So um, I'll be having like a conversation with her about books and and her books. And, and then uh, we have a, a teenage, a teenager patron who's going to do their own book talk with her. So. That's uh, really exciting. And then our art contest is towards the end of the month and our award ceremony, which will conclude our summer reading program. And we're very excited about all the cool awards that people can win. Okay. Are there any questions on the youth services? Okay, let's go to teen Thank services. Cool. Our turn now. Um, hi, we're from Teen Services. Now there's two of us. Um, to, uh, this past month in June, we had two events. On June 4th, we had our Build Your Own Pirate Ship. Um, we provided Legos of a variety of pieces, as you guys can see. They were not like the regular little squares. We used what Makerspace had previously had for their like robotics and other stuff. So they were supposed to create um ships using their imagination and the weird pieces and we had a plethora of fantastic um pirate ships come in and we had 159 attendees here at Maine and 117 attendees over at South Coast. so we had over 100 people actually one of our examples is up there we're not going to bring it down it's very delicate but that was one of the examples that we used um, and yeah, people had a lot of fun. We did provide snacks for this one. Uh, this has been our only one where we'll provide snacks um, along with the activity. Um, and simply because we did, we weren't able to provide a presentation for this because of the spacing. We had the multi-purpose room um, and the medium room not available for us. We didn't have the space to do the presentation. 
and talking to 150 people like in a line was odd, but they had a lot of fun. They really enjoyed it. They asked if we were going to do another Lego event again. Um, that wasn't the normal kids play day. So we're hoping to do something similar again next year. Right, but so they just kind of took over the children's area over here? Or? No, we actually, the space that used to have the YA shelving, um, so right next to the glass bowls, oh, we brought side. tables. Yeah, we brought white tables that we normally use for our regular events. We brought them out. We assembled it there. We got extra chairs. But we really actually took over almost every table that we had. I had people near um, the quiet room doing their uh, pirate ships over there in front of friends of the library like any surface that was available they used, they used. so yeah we we went over the whole library for that did you get the legos donated or were the legos come no they had been previously used in makerspace activities they're just old they're, so, they're old yeah, so they're 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 years back for our robotics oh okay. yeah, yeah. They, just, they were just they were outdated okay. tech and so they were able to take it off a lot of people unfortunately well some not a lot of people some people did yeah. But they weren't supposed to, but it's okay. Yeah, they do. Um, we have a whole bunch of pieces. And again, uh, as you can, I don't know if you guys can see very clear, but it's, they were very non traditional, traditional Legos. So people were really going, they really let their imagination run when it came to that. And we had a lot of a, common, a really good combination of teens, kids, and uh, adults show up, usually for a lot more events. And throughout the last year, um, you guys have heard me say we'll primarily have kids. This we were even in the scales. A lot of teenagers are coming to our events, and um, it's really fun to see all their creativity just shine. People love Legos. Yeah, Legos. yeah, Legos are amazing. And that was not our only really fun event. We had our steampunk tea party. Um, for that one, we did provide sandwich cucumber sandwiches, um, Earl Grey tea, regular. Lipton tea, some Kit Kats in matcha flavor, strawberry flavor, milk tea flavor, which tastes like Earl Grey, um, biscuit cookies, and then vanilla madeleines. So all of that were some of the aspects that we were trying to kind of share. We did a presentation for that one. As you guys can see, a lot of people dressed up. Um, we had close to 200 attendees here in Maine and 138 attendees at Southmost. We ran out of... Uh, our snacks here at Maine, except for the cucumber sandwiches, we ran out of everything within 15 minutes. So the cucumber sandwiches was the last thing standing, but we also made like 500 of those. So we were proud. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. There was, everyone was super engaging. We had a good presentation. We learned a little bit about some of the pop culture um, aspects of steampunk and media currently, um, how it, came to be um, the authors that were informed in it and a lot of fantastic participation in terms of, of our attendees and costumes that were just fantastic. And again, we also saw a huge, a large number of teens come into that. I did try to feature them in our pictures. Very cool. That question, I, I've heard of, sorry. Uh, Kit Kat, matcha Kit Kat, what do you, where are those? <laughs> so, um, yes, we did get ours from Amazon as they are oh, okay. vendor, yeah, but there are, there's a local shop oh. um, just on the street next to us. That's where I get my first. Like Japan or something, right? Is that where yeah, I'm they're Japanese sure. flavors. So they do have different yeah, lines. Yeah, market. Yeah. Fox also... Lunch also has some packets, but they're okay. so expensive. You can also get Key Lime. <laughs> but they do have seasonal, seasonal flavors, but I did want to make sure that we're the team that uh, assisted me with this, we wanted to make sure that we brought a little bit of like England and the Victorian era flavors into our presentation and into our, our event. Um, as we did give a little bit of, we did get some information and there were some, a lot of learning aspects of it. So um, we were pleasantly surprised as to how many people enjoyed the Earl Grey that we made. We made it iced tea, obviously. We're not gonna do hot tea in the summer. Um, I'm curious in an event like this, do you, how many were you sort of thinking were going to come versus? Since this is a brag tag event and we, based on last year's um, made cafe popularity, I did kind of go through the numbers. We did have, I want to say like at least 50 more attendees. So I, I aimed for 200 people. 
So I prepped for 200 for both locations, actually 200 for Maine and 150 at Southmost. So we were, we thought we right were around prepared. There. Yeah, we, we did a good, a, yeah. we, we prepared as best as we could. Um, we had a really good turnout and we can never tell because of the heat, weather, uh, just general vacations that come up during the summer. Um, but we wanted to make sure that we did something similar to last year since Maid Cafe was very popular and that was something that that's one of our more popular events during the year, our um, Japanese candy tasting. So we wanted to incorporate a little bit of that and give the teens that maybe don't come to our regular events a taste of what they can continue having during the year. Yes. Any other questions? Okay, so oh, coming up next, we are having our, well, we just had our DIY rocket ship. You guys will see pictures of that either on social media currently or next board meeting. Um, and we're having our DIY artifacts. So for that event, we're going to be making air dry, our own air dry clay artifacts. We're going to have a little presentation. Um, people are going to get a little bit of clay and then they're going to get to take that home. And that is it for me or for us. Okay. Any questions? All right. I'll see you in the next go. Uh, makerspace. Hello, everyone. Uh, just some quick updates for makerspace. So, as you already know, new, uh, our new advisor, Alan, has been doing a good job. He's uh, had some wonderful interactions with our patrons. He's helped a couple with our laser engraver and all that stuff. Pretty well knowledgeable in our 3D printing as well. So, if you need him, don't hesitate to ask. No pressure. <laughs> he's good. He's good. And then so for our summer reading program activities, we've had our frame forest garden and it was pretty well received by our patrons. They got to decorate, um, make their own little garden. And we had a really good attendance. We actually had more attendance at our Southmost wow, location. The first time you have more over there than here. Yep. Um, and we were not prepared for that. We were not expecting that. <laughs> yeah. We thought we had it's a good it's a good problem, yes. So and and in July we had our uh, McCranny event where they made a nice little replica of the Animal Crossing um, shop, and we had two hundred and twenty show up to that. Um, the one here in Maine will happen later on this month, so we're expecting if more, probably about the same amount. Is the reason that we had I think you know, between conversations that I had with Oslo is that some patrons that weren't able to make it to the event that Maine went to the Southmost one. So we're expecting something similar happening over here. Uh, but I think we're better prepared for that. And then uh, coming up this later on this week, uh, we'll be having our GoFest event. Um, the buzz is all around for that one. I already expected a minimum two to 300 people for that. And we're ready to go. So if you like Pokemon, be sure to come by. That's it. Any uh, questions? It's, it's like the Pokemon event is actually a, a mission driven uh, work plan item. Uh, Dr. Darwin wanted to find out about this and involve exercise. And so a patron talked to Anthony and the patron talked to Commissioner Gowan, and that's how it started. And, and one thing that I want to add, and I think you, you've seen it, I've been doing, I've been part of the 27, for, after 27 years of many summer reading programs. And this is by far the best. I wouldn't even know about the numbers to be honest with you, but it's just the atmosphere, the way that people react. I've been in there, and no concern, no complaint that I'm aware of. And, and quite frankly, I've had the best staff ever. They're the smartest people here. Uh, they come up with the names. I'm curious. I, I probably do not want to find out about names and titles because they come up with weird, like Jumbo Bango and all this stuff. <laughs> they have free brain. My, my responsibility is just to provide the money. And that's what it's all about. And I'm so proud of these young people. And, you know, they, they, they're they on their own. The only thing Brendan and I are in charge of make sure that we don't lead them to failures and just guide them in the best. And I think the future is bright with the staff and this, this type of it is true. I mean, I can see with the oh, library right, programming, yeah. but of course, like all these ideas are trendy. Yeah. And with the little ones or the adults or the teens, like that's how you bring them in, right? With all these things that are happening right now. And you can see it in the library program. 
And that's, and that's what's them. drawing. That's for them. We do not have those things. So we, they are not alone. They have we really them. Yeah. yeah. You guys are yeah, doing an excellent job. I'm kind of surprised. The one that surprised me was Steampunk. Because I thought that had already died down. So. Oh, you and, then uh, and then you guys brought it back. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I hadn't seen it. I had seen it high go down. Now it's seen back up. So I was I was very impressed to see those numbers on the steam pump. The hidden niche. The hidden yeah. niche. Oh, believe me, you're gonna lie. Okay, so uh, we just had uh, makerspace. No, qu any more questions? All right, I'll I have reach. a question. Um, oh. It's kind of related to a lot of young people stuff. Um, you know, for instance. It, it, I have teenagers now. I feel like now I'm aware of this kind of thing. Uh, I'm curious if y'all get requests for things like, you know, people need community service hours. Like they want to prove that they were like they're involved. Do y'all do y'all do those kind of requests? Well, you know, a lot of you. We get a, honestly a lot, especially in the summer um, or leading up to the summer. I want to say that I probably sent like. 40 kids to HR. It's like, like, oh, it's like can you yeah, they'll be like, hey, can you sign this real quick? So I explain the, the policy for the city. We guide them towards towards the city hall, the website, the application that they have to do, encourage parents to go ahead and do that. But we do get a lot of requests throughout the year. It's something that's just constant. Yeah. No, I think that's a great way for people, you know, kids, uh, you know, just to get involved and they're looking to get involved again, plugged in somewhere, right? And then the library can be there for them. I just wonder how complicated it is. For it, is it is a really complicated. Unfortunately, there's bureaucracy that has to be involved because yeah. of, of some issues. Mm -hmm. So uh, everything, everybody has to be vetted through the HR volunteer yeah. program. But they're trying to streamline as fast as possible. Or even if they just go to, like if they're going to meetings, like do you have the authority to say, okay, I'm signing your attendance, like you were here to a meeting, like you're involved, you're an involved kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm just curious about yeah. what you all can do versus the advisory, yeah. um, which are going to be be picking back up in August. Mm -hmm. Um, so it'll be August through May, unless we something happens. Probably December is, I think, the only yes. month that we don't have one. Um, so for those, I do sign paperwork that they bring. I I am open about that. Um, and then we also keep track of their names so that they can go ahead and and get their hours at the end should they finalize that paperwork. Unfortunately, I don't get a lot of, um, I was, none of the people that signed up at the beginning of the year with me have, I've received their name that they've been approved. So I am keeping track of all of that. And I do encourage them to bring their paperwork in simply because they, they are here. That's something that I'm promising that I'm making sure that they have access to. And I do not want for them to not participate. Yes, it's always fun to have fun, but um, I also realistically know that they're coming for that as well. They can say that they're involved with the Teen Advisory Club, but it comes to my understanding. If they if they wanted to actually be a volunteer, they have to go to the city. Yeah. But they turn people down for any any program. Yeah. And a lot of our ideas or a lot of our requests, I someone will say, Oh, I really miss this. Or for the steampunk tea party, someone is like, I can't, I remember that you guys did the maid cafe last year. Are you guys doing something similar to that? And off of that, I just I started thinking of what could be similar that's going to be different enough, but would still fulfill that want in them. So I do try to, I do listen. Okay. And I'm curious, sorry, it's one of my questions. Mm -hmm. um, for the teens, do you have anything like they can, I don't know, vote for their own like leadership or anything like that? So we are, that's something that I was going to bring up in our next uh, meeting to, with leadership, but that is something that once we have a better I've been lucky. I've been really, really lucky to have the growth that I've had um, since the beginning of my time here, really in Teen Advisory. We had one to zero to three people show up to my events, and now I have a consistent number of, I want to say like 22 to 20 to 30 kids. So I've grown it by almost 200 percent right? It's been huge. Um, now that I have a more consistent attendance, I feel confident that that's something that we can start going into. So I'm trying to get a proposal ready, um, and that ultimately I'll bring it up to to management so that we can see how we can move forward. But it, with that, if that's something that we can do. And to add that to it, it's, uh, it's actually uh, people are reaching out to the mayor, which feels put down to us. As you know, uh, Commissioner Villarreal, he he's very big on, on youth, and so they might even consider having a youth support, if you will. Yeah. 
so uh, they, they had to doctor with the sort of scholarship review. So that is the movement. And so I'm mean, going to tag along collaboration with parts and CMO and see my office to do something like that. So we're, it's, it's, a, it's a trend that, that we're getting. We can't forget about the news. So we need to make sure that. That's a great way to empower the very well, yeah. Especially if you're starting to see the same kind of core yeah. Lock, yeah. Big group of people coming consistently. Has your advisory group grown in South Mostel? I know that numbers were great. Unfortunately, no. We're not going to continue with the advisory group over at South Mostel numbers. Um, what no, the I'm not setting that uh, left us, but um, it has grown just tremendously here. Um, parents will bring their kids' friends with them. Um, um, we've actually, I've been very lucky to get to have a, I guess, a non official partnership with a Good Samaritan. So their team group comes to a lot of our events. I share a lot of that information over with them. Uh, Friends, Friendship of Women is another one that has collaborated with us in making presentations for our team advisory. And they're also having a, uh, a youth program happening. So I'm hoping to grow that kind of community with the organizations that are already coming to the library. Um, and then just kind of keep fostering that trust and that collaboration um, and an opportunity for, for growth. Yeah. But obviously they're, they're welcome here. With the yeah. mm -hmm. And she'll be able to develop something else to offset the fact that we won't have an advisory mm -hmm. group at South. So that's still in the works, but just because one program didn't work there, yeah, yeah. Um, we'll start something new and hopefully that will become a hit. Maybe maybe change the name sometimes, the advisory kind of it's very formal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but just maybe something maybe more targeted would be, I mean, what's the what are the what's the closest high school over there? Well, Lopez and Lopez. Right. So maybe if you do something like target specifically with yeah, Lopez, yeah. like kids who are close, they're already at a plugged in a local school, maybe with a library, yeah. library in Lopez. Yeah, it's, it's a sorry, more targeted. Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, 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 forgot for Sarah? Sarah? Sarah, Sarah, yeah, we have a marketing a marketing. Yep. Background. Been a long day, Sarah. Sorry. That's okay. No and worries. I have a cold. So. Yeah. But yeah, 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 a lot of TikTok videos in. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of TikTok videos in. Yeah. <laughs> I wish we could. Like, you know, I know. It's we're a city. Gonna, so I know. Policy, city policy we, we can provide. Yeah. But maybe some reels on Facebook. Can you? Um, that? Yeah, we do have a couple. We actually, yeah, I was about to say, we have quite a few of those. Okay. Some You'll see a few of us um, doing stuff there. But yes, our new creative services specialist. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, has been creating a lot of yeah. videos in, and he's very creative, so he has been just a tremendous help. We're, we're very appreciative of him. We actually just featured one yesterday, yeah. Story, yeah. yeah so, Lindy okay. and uh, Neil will be released over to you know, um, tied it into the older version on uh, Hoopla and then tied it into the book. So, really nice, nice video. We all haven't seen it. Oh, you saw that the, the PS5 games were going to be available. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 last the, the, the last post I saw. <laughs> well, the average. Oh, I'm going to be presenting for Courtney. Um, she gave me some notes that I will share with you all. Uh, for this slide, this was our NREACH table at the Summer Bash that Avery mentioned earlier. Um, it was myself. Anthony and Alan at this table. And Alan did very well despite only working with us for I think three days at that point. <laughs> um, so we reached about 155 children, 40 teens, 80 adults, for a total of 275 people at this event. And then for this slide, so our next set of outreaches were unique based on their collaborative partnerships. Um, we had the Family Strong event, which was hosted by the Housing Authority of the City of Brownsville at their Tropical Gardens location, which promoted literacy services around Brownsville to make the community a key part of the family. Um, many of the families that joined us already have their library cards, but we're happy to hear about the summer reading program events. And then the next event was our first ever participation in the Parks Department's Luminada. Um, for this one, we had a really huge turnout um, as we balanced talking to our vendors about the services um, and just the vendors around us. Our team made sure to reach out to the organizations there so we can be a resource to them as well. Um, we did run out of bags that day, but the public also enjoyed the blinking ring lights. 
um, that they were able to use at night. Um, the different organizations also thanked us for our lives and social media work promoting them um, from parks to work to the police department. Um, next was our Pride event, and this was hosted by the Friendship of Women for Pride Month. Um, it was called Pride at the Park. This event was rescheduled due to weather, but Friendship of Women was fully committed to having the staff attend and being as communicative as possible. Um, the library staff was super excited to attend and to promote that our library system is an inclusive and open place to everyone. And then next was the Men's Health. For this one, we wanted to make sure we represented men in our library as well as offered our services. Um, the Blue Tie Affair was hosted by Cameron County as an outdoor event at Benavides Park. We raffled off our traditional canvas bag and a small light-up boxing grill machine to fit the healthy. Staff promoted our online databases and audiobooks that you can listen to while working out. And this contrasted the Bronzeville Men's Wellness Summit 24, which was hosted indoors at the event center. Um, this event was focused on fellow employees, learning about their health resources. Uh, both events support the men in our community, no matter their journey. And then this is kind of just the numbers for um, outreach. Uh, this month, we attended six events with over 1,500 people served. Our best attended event was the Lunada. Yeah, that was the most popular one. That was your suggestion. Huh? So that was your suggestion. Yes. The, thank you. the rings were very popular. They made it all the way to Chicago. Um, my sister, that was the first night my sister in law had come in. She got some, took up to her, took up to her grandkids back up in uh, at Rochelle, Illinois. You said rings? Huh? Yeah, yeah. The, the rings. They had all like, you mean the mouth? Of course, I didn't get a bag. Oh, sorry. <laughs> ran out. What? I'll be sure to let her know. Yeah, and, uh, and actually, my son, they did walk around and gave some to the vendors. My, we were one of the vendors when we got one. Oh, okay. And, and we did provide uh, refreshments to the staff that was there. I don't know whether the three staff members that were there just got. How many? Well, there was only three that went out that night? Um, I, think, I think it was three. Let me see. I was at it. Um, I can't I, see. There was a four of them, I think. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure. We gave away three drinks, so we gave you all the horchata and the Mexican motor. Which is awesome. Uh, sorry, this is how does Lunada work with uh, it's like overtime because it's like the hours for staff? Yeah, we, we schedule around it. Okay, we schedule accordingly. Uh, we don't have an overtime budget, yeah, so we schedule around Okay, comp time or it that's it, that's a case. Okay. Usually they'll be scheduled toward the event, so they'll come in later we in the day. The schedules in. We try not to accompany. No, I'll just make them uncomfortable with me. No, I know. Sorry, just to like. No, I mean it's 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 a great event. I I would like I try to get my kids to come. They're teenage rebellious teenage phase. I don't do anything they want anymore. But uh, uh, no, I think these big events at the library absolutely should keep them. But they're after hours, right? Sometimes. Yeah, we just, we just schedule them differently. Um, and then a little stat that she included was a year to date, we are over 19,500 people served, with our main attendees being children, followed by adults and then teens. And then just as a reminder, our next update for outreaches will be in September. Um, we kind of slowed down due to the heat outside um, and summer reading program and also because of the games of Texas. Uh, my, okay, I have a question. Oh, you are going to be, okay. We got, I'm seeing that the Lunai had a lot of children. Do y'all you have a, a counter as you come up or? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, everyone kind of has a, um, okay. a little counter that way we can kind of make sure everyone has an accurate number. It also has a spreadsheet there. Uh, yeah, I like the little, little markings on ticket rooms. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, and then, what was your question, Rebecca? Oh, uh, the that if you were going to be in the game of Texas, but I heard yes, right? Staff will be staff will be assisting. Yeah. Oh, okay, but not boost because I'm like I know they're oh, athletes uh, from uh, other places. Time, we are. It's really hot. Right? Yeah. Crew here at yeah. both libraries, as staff will be working. Okay. Okay, we have a generator. I was gonna say this is the best place to be if the lights go out. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
And then right here, these are some upcoming events that we've been invited to with a back to school theme, a uh, back to school bash, which is on August 7th. That's at the Bob Clark Social Services Center. Um, next at the South Coast in Voldiabla. In Vol in Vol in Vol I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it. In Volval, in Vol and then the Brownsville Police Department is going to have their back to school health fair booth registration that's August 9th at the Brownsville Sports Park. Did any of you have any questions I can try to answer? Maybe pass along to Brittany. <laughs> It's a huge, huge shout out because we know it's very hot yeah. and you're yeah. still out there. So, and I know that was not all those bags were very popular because by the time we got that, people were walking around today. And I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go get a bag. Nope, they're out. Give away about like 400, 500 bags. Um, I'm yeah. not sure, but I know yeah, we had a yeah. this team. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Uh, just remember that some of us do go to the bank. <laughs> get him a bag. Yeah. Friends of the library. Um, I uh, we're we were kind of sketchy the last couple of weeks with everyone going on vacation. We're all volunteers, uh, but we're trying to get back with more consistent essence going along in summer. We have more of our volunteers back already, so we should be back to regular hours. Other than that, we're just, I just keep. Refreshing what we have. Uh, I did want to see if we can get product, new product for South Coast. Some, but other other than that, we have both branches open. This one regular hours. I I know South Coast at least Saturdays. I'm there every Saturday to make sure it's open. And throughout the week, the library is open. So. I, I, one question I have: If you can you, uh, make this observation, are there? Some types of books that are more popular than others. Oh, yeah. What, which kind of those books? Mystery thrillers. So, quick like history. I have the regulars that come in for that. Um, biographies do well. Local history does well. Children's is on and off, hit and miss. Um, audios are fading out. So, it, it's a lot of... It's it's what I see come in, in ebbs and flows. So, I, I just adjust our, our whatever we have according to... That's interesting. Yeah, and I stated before, I I I just want to commend Bobby. She's always here. I hope she doesn't get tired. <laughs> We've never had somebody so easy to work with. Like thank you. That means Bobby, and, and she's pleased for time. She really talk about a volunteer. It, it, it would be like a MVP for volunteer. <laughs> and she's easy to work with. She's direct with our staff, and she hasn't said no. Anything before it was a little fight, and so oh no, like we were we jumped when they asked us to help with the pokey fest. Yeah. Uh, we provided the, the two systems that they wanted to give away. So, so sometimes there's certain things that cannot be bought with city funds. So a lot of we jump in the middle, so obviously they will help. Them and your volunteers, do they go to the same city process, or is it different? No, it's different. Ours is different because we're we're uh, we're a charity organization in the city. Okay. So thank you. Uh, just one of the things. And anything else? No, that's all I had for friends of Any questions? That's it. All right. One question before is: uh, Is there a way? Like I know, like we have some of these major events that happen on ground here. Is there any way we could get a, a notification, just like a text or something? Hey, this is going to happen. Just something. Uh, I know. I I tried it. I, I've been wanting to come to a meet to stuff that happens here, but because I'm running a business doing all this stuff, I oh man, I was supposed to, you know. And sometimes my Google Calendar does it, but if I get a text, that's how I keep it fresh in my mind. Okay. So we could get us some, some kind of notification that that would be great. That way we can at least try to show up as an advisor board show up and say, hey, you know, here we are. I try to make it here. I went to the the banana fertilizer one. <laughs> well, I did my part for the banana fertilizer. I ate three bananas. <laughs> <laughs> and then this lady I saw was just kept walking right. And he had to go. Yeah. And I went to the one jumping on the crocodiles. Yeah. Yeah, we can definitely do that. Okay, I appreciate it. Is there any other business? Okay. A motion to a motion's been made. Second. And second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed?
You need a journal. Let's do it. 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 Let's do it